here to celebrate the happiness of two people that we love a lot and to tell them that we hope that happiness goes on and on and on forever. Oh, I once dedicated a song to Stephen Audrey and I'd like to open the evening's festivities with that song. So for Stephen Audrey. Now that the party has started, I want everybody to get up and dance. As a matter of fact, that's an order. Everybody get up and dance. <laughs> Well, nobody seems to be following her orders. Um, darling, we are the guests of honor. Well, I'm aware of that. I'm just surprised that Terry didn't want to put us on a date. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I do think everyone is expecting us to dance first. Yes, Steve, no bless, so please. Well, if those are the rules of the game, I'll play by them. May I? I'd be delighted. <laughs> Next on my dance card, Leslie. Ah, uh, well, we may have to dance in the kitchen. I promised Terry I'd help with the food. <laughs> Well, that gives me the golden opportunity to dance with the other woman in my life. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Laura. Oh. <laughs> would you care to have this next dance? <laughs> I'd be get you in gear? Oh, thanks. Yeah, it sure wouldn't hurt. All right. I think that I may have a second cup myself. You know, Rick, I, uh, I've been as aware as you have of Leslie's, uh, what should we call it, tension? Like, maybe even more so, because I'm afraid I'm probably the cause of it. How do you figure that? Well, I'm the guest in the house. Relax. Doesn't have anything to do with you, buddy. Laura is the problem. Laura? How could Laura be a problem? Okay, now, you got to understand, this is not a criticism of Leslie. But if uh, she errs in any direction at all, it's in being overprotective. You know, I've noticed that. As a matter of fact, I tried to talk to her about it myself yesterday, but uh, somehow she managed to get me sidetracked and reminiscing about the old college days. I started telling her about the, all the co-eds you and I used to compete for. As I remember, there really wasn't any competition. 
soon as I got serious about a girl, you moved in on her, swinging your five iron and that boyish smile of yours. <laughs> well, you were my bird dog. I always figured if they looked good to you, then they had to be special. <laughs> and you did lead me to some beauties. Oh, yeah. Remember Shirley? Yeah. How could I forget? Well, I figured Shirley was ancient history, so I mentioned to Leslie that you used to be warm for her form, as we used to put it in those days. Yeah, it uh, certainly is ancient history. Exactly what did you tell Leslie? What about Shirley? Oh, uh, nothing at all, really. Nothing at all. Well, I'll be glad to help you with that if I can, old buddy. And, of course, anything else I can do for you, too. No, you've done too much for me already. If I take any more favors from you, I'm going to lose my last shreds of self-respect. David, it may have been a long time, but I'm grateful to have the opportunity to repay you for what you did for me. Leslie doesn't know about that, does she? No, she's, uh, she's asked a couple of times. All I've told her is that I was indebted to you. I think she assumes it has something to do with money. Well, let's allow her to go on assuming that, shall we? Good morning, sweetheart. I hear you were up and out bright and early this morning. Oh, uh, did Leslie mention that? No. David did. Your mother was still asleep when I left for the hospital. Oh. Audrey, how are you doing? Oh, well, I was just telling Laura that I am stuck with uh, assigning the New Year's Day duty. Uh, no matter how I work it out, I don't think I'm going to make many friends with the student nurses. <laughs> with power comes responsibility, you know. Oh, where do I go to abdicate? <laughs> uh, say, Laura, I'm taking your mom out to dinner tonight. Would you uh, like to join us? Oh, thanks very much, Rick, but... Uh... I won't be free tonight. See you later. Honey, I'm not convinced that this is a good idea. I think maybe we ought to put off the party this evening until you're feeling better. I wouldn't dream of it. It'd do me a lot of good to keep busy, and I'm certainly going to do that before this evening. Well, I guess you know best. I'm going to be um, off in that helicopter run this afternoon with Dr. Quartermain, but I will get home as soon as I can hmm? to help you out. Don't you worry about me. I'm going to manage just fine. But I don't want you doing it alone. Now, Laura and David are here, so they'll be able to give you a hand. Mm, we'll see. Now, uh, look, you and I are not going to start out the New Year's by uh, keeping things from each other, are we? Oh, I don't want to. Well, then let's don't. Something has been bothering you since Christmas. You've been jumpy and nervous, and I want to know what's causing it. I mean, at first I thought it was because you found Laura in David's room, but I can't believe it's still bothering you. It was totally innocent, honey, and you know it. It isn't that. Well, then what is it? Hey, something's going on between you and Laura. I mean, I notice she even avoids being in the same room with us if she can. So, whatever it is, let's get this straightened out so we can go back to being a happy family again, huh? I don't think it ever can be straightened out. Why not? Look, I don't... I don't want to have any riddles between us. So, whatever it is, honey, let's get it out in the open, because I'll tell you something, I am not leaving this room until you tell me why you've been acting the way you have. So come on, give. Okay, I will. But I don't think it's something that can be fixed. Not now. I think maybe... Maybe the whole thing has just gotten too much out of hand. There you go. You're talking in circles again. What's gotten out of hand? Come on, just give me a simple explanation, huh? Okay. In a word, Laura. I went to look in her purse to check on her wallet. Well, you know, when I had you standing guard at the stairs. I looked in, and there on the bottom were birth control pills. Okay, that's still no reason to jump to the conclusion that she's using them. Well, Rick, of course she's using them. How do you know that? Because she admitted it. Well, she had as much as admitted it, she didn't deny it. I see. That certainly explains why you've been so upset this past week. Well, it's frightening, isn't it? Well, it is a little shocking. And what I can't understand is why didn't you come and tell me about it in the first place? I wanted to. Believe me, I really wanted to, but I just felt... I felt I should talk to Laura first, just in case there was some other kind of possible explanation. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me exactly what she told you when you talked to her. It was awful. She told me that she'd gotten the pills from a, a doctor, but she wouldn't give me any of the details. 
And uh, then she accused me of spying on her and invading her privacy and trying to dominate her, and I don't know what all of this. Look, I, I know it must have been an unpleasant experience. I think what you're going to have to do now is sit down and calmly discuss it with her on an adult level. Just be careful that you don't accuse her of anything. I'm just so worried. Every time she's out of the house with Scotty, I've even gotten to the point where I'm suspicious when she's with other men like David. Oh, you're really letting your imagination run away with you, aren't you? Honey, you've got to control it. Uh, David. <laughs> David, as far as he's concerned, Laura, is, is, she's a little girl, just a few years older than his own daughter was. Does he think of her that way? Honey, I know it for a fact. We've discussed it openly. Whether or not he was attracted to Laura? <laughs> no, of course not. How he feels about her. Okay, I know, I know. I'm just probably building straw men, but I do know that Scotty has his own place now, and I know that she has been coming in later than she ever did before since he moved in. Well, I, I don't think that it's for any illicit reasons. I have an idea that she's... She's probably avoiding you because she doesn't want to be with you since you two had that scene. And that's one of the reasons why you're going to have to discuss it with her openly and carefully. And what do I do if she admits to me, yes, she is having physical relations with someone, huh, doctor? What do I say then? Well, it isn't going to be easy. But it's not a unique situation, you know. I mean, it's the, it's the type of thing that every mother has to face sooner or later when her daughter reaches maturity. Aha, uh -huh, except that I don't happen to feel that she has reached anything like that yet. I don't think she's anywhere near mature enough to handle casual affairs, let alone have them. Well, if it comes down to that, you're going to have to face it just the same. Yeah. And you should face it prepared to, to discuss it wisely and sensibly. I mean, yelling at each other isn't going to help either of you. Hi. I thought I'd come and see if there's anything I could do to help. No, thank you, David. I think I've got... Everything in hand. Yeah, David, maybe there is something you can help out with. I, um, I'm going to be gone this afternoon, but maybe you can give Leslie a hand getting things organized for this evening. Oh, sure. I'd be glad to do anything I can. And uh, do me another favor. Uh, Leslie hasn't been feeling well, so uh, don't dwell on Laura or mention anything about her comings and goings because it would only tend to upset Leslie even more, okay? Oh, I'm glad you told me. I sure wouldn't want to do anything to upset her any more than she has been. Hi, have you been waiting long? Oh, just a few minutes. Uh, where's Alan? Oh, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. He had to cancel out at the last moment and asked me to fill in for him. I hope you don't mind terribly. Frankly, I'd rather wait for Alan. Well, that may be quite a bit of a rate. Uh, he's on his way to New York at the moment. Some high-level hush-hush meeting, he said. <laughs> anyway, he asked me to fill in for him, and I know you have to be back early for your party tonight, so shouldn't we get started? Yeah. Have you been waiting long? Oh, just a few minutes. Uh, where's Alan? Oh, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. He had to cancel out at the last moment and asked me to fill in for him. I hope you don't mind terribly. Frankly, I'd rather wait for Alan. Well, that may be quite a bit of a rate. Uh, he's on his way to New York at the moment. Some high-level hush-hush meeting, he said. <laughs> Anyway, he asked me to fill in for him, and I know you have to be back early for your party tonight, so shouldn't we get started? Yeah, I do have to be back. I'm just wondering if maybe we shouldn't uh, put off this whole thing until Alan gets back to town. I mean, the weather isn't exactly encouraging today anyway. Oh, well, suit yourself. I know a Alan was very anxious to get your report on the efficiency runs, and I know he wanted to know that as soon as possible. That's why I volunteered to stand in for him. Well, I sure hope that they have a pilot to take us up because I'm a little bit rusty to be handling one of those things uh, solo. Not to worry. Nope, I checked it out this morning and the pilot is ready and waiting as soon as we get there. <sighs> All right. I guess we're off and away.